This is the level 3 2016 uh, electricity exam. And I'll be working through question 1 for this video. Question 1. Charging a capacitor. Eleanor sets up a circuit to investigate how capacitors operate. The circuit is shown below. Um, it includes uh, 2.2 times 10 to the negative 6 as a 2.2 micro, microfarad capacitor and a double pulse switch. So here's the battery if you can see it. Here's the capacitor with just a voltage meter above it. We've got a resistor and we've got a lamp. Calculate the maximum charge stored by the capacitor. So if you jump onto your formula sheet, you should have charge Q. Um, measured in coulombs is equal to the capacitance times the voltage. We have the capacitance and we have the voltage so it's just a simple matter of Q equals CV which is equal to 2.2 times 10 to the minus 6 that's microfarads times 5 volts which is equal to 1.1 times 10 to the negative 5 coulombs there we go second question the capacitor is initially charged and the switch is in the position shown um, the capacitor is initially uncharged and the switch is in position shown. So originally the capacitor is not charged, it's just an open circuit. Um, Eleanor moves the switch to S1, charging the capacitor up. Uh, graph of the capacitor voltage against time is shown below. Use a graph to calculate the resistance of the uh, resistance of the resistor. Explain, uh, draw lines on the graph um, to help explain your working. You can if you want, um, but there's another sort of a cheap method you could do. I'm going to do both methods. So first and foremost, um, one time constant. So for a capacitor charge, after one time, so we have time constants equal to the resistance times the capacitance. After five time constants, the capacitor is basically charged. So we can see it's basically charged at five seconds. Um, <coughs> Which means, and so after five, five, I'll write that up here, five time constants equals charged, fully charged. So one time constant we could pretty much say is one second. Um, so we could have the tau is equal to, to one second, but I'll show you the other way to do it. Um, after one time constant, the voltage is equal to, so V is equal to, I'm just sort of roughly putting it here. 63%. So we take 63% of the like the max voltage to find what the voltage is after one time constant. So 0 0.63 times 5 is equal to 3.15. So now we need to go 3.15 up the graph to find what the actual time is and just check it against our rough estimate of one second. So here's 2.5, there here's 3.5, here's 3.25, 3.125 would be between there. So we're going to go somewhere between 3.125 uh, and 3. Point, we're just above 3.125, which is somewhere here-ish. So slightly above 3.125, which is 12.5 is half of 25. Yes, that's how it works. Right. We'll Draw some lines down, which gives us a time constant of, I don't know if you can see that, so it's split into one, so it's split into brackets of two, so two, four, six, eight, two again, um, and it's the lines come down directly between one and 1.2, so it's 1.1. So we can say the time constant is equal to 1.1, and we roughly guess that five time constants is, is uh, happens at so five time constants in other words for it to get fully charged is five seconds which would be one second 1.1 close enough right the resistance r is equal to over c which is equal to i'm gonna go with 1.1 because it's slightly more accurate over capacitance which is 2.2 times 10 I don't know if you can see that, I'll lift that up a bit. To the negative 6, which is equal to 5.00 times 10 to the power of 5 
ohms. Um, notice I use 3SF because uh, if we can see that capacitance up here is 3SF. Really speaking, I couldn't really get to, it should be 2SF because my time constant's only 2SF, but just whatever, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, right, so that's that answer. Oh, just double check if I actually answered the question. Draw the, use the graph to calculate the resistance resistor. Draw lines of the graph to explain your working. Um, yeah, that pretty much explains it. Right, next question. Give a comprehensive, can we see that? Explanation for the slope of the capacitor voltage graph. Include reasons for the starting voltage and the final voltage. So I'll start off with, I'll move this rule out of the way. Um, so I'll just, I'll just work through it. Um, can we see that? Yeah. Initially, um, the capacitor is uncharged, so that means there's going to be no voltage across it. So it is uncharged. So the capacitor voltage starts um, at zero. So that, that explains the uh, start of the graph, because if you look at the start of the graph, the voltage starts at zero. Yep. Um, so that's took that one off. Um, right, next part. Um, Right, so I've said when the switch is closed, the potential difference um, is greatest. And that's a potential difference between the capacitor and the battery. Um, yeah, this causes causes a large current. Uh, I just put brackets max current because really that is the maximum current. Oh no, max current. Max current and thus uh, rapid increase in voltage. So initially you have a massive current, which means you're going to have a rapid increase in voltage, which you can see on the graph from the gradient being very, very steep. Um, yep. Um, as more charge accumulates, oh, how much that's not a T, it's just an L, accumulates. On one of the plates, plates, um, the potential difference becomes less. Um, right there, yeah, less causing. Uh, drop in current, I suppose, in current. <clears throat> and this reduces the rate of change. Change of the voltage Which can be seen by the graph. I'm going to run out of space. Be seen by the flattening off of the graph.
Right, so that's pretty much answered the rise. So when the switch is closed, potential difference is greatest. This causes a large current. Um, basically, it's max current, and you get a rapid increase in voltage. As more charge accumulates on one of the plates, um, the potential difference between the battery and the capacitor becomes less, which means the electrons have to fight against the electrons on the plate. So they've got a there's repulsive force obviously they've got to fight against that electric field going backwards um, which causes a drop in current um, which means the voltage going onto the plate isn't going to be as rapid so it's a decrease um, in the amount of voltage accumulating on the plates and that, that flattens off until the plates basically stabilize right so we'll finish it off with um, when the capacitor is fully charged that in there so it is fully charged. Capacitor is fully charged. Current obviously equals zero because it's charged. I equals zero. R equals zero. Um, and the supply voltage. Supply voltage. Voltage. I need an L in there. I'll just put battery. Battery equals the voltage across voltage oh, what are we doing? the voltage across the plates of the capacitor oh that just fit well done right so just for the last bit the final voltage when the capacitor is fully charged um, there's no more current flowing there's no more resistance because there's no more current um, and the supply voltage equals the voltage across the plates of the capacitor. That's always the case um, for any capacitor in DC circuits. If you give them long enough, they'll charge up to the supply voltage of your um, of your circuit, and it just acts like a short circuit, and the current stops flowing um, until you decide to discharge it. Right. So next one, Eleanor connects another 2.2 uh, microfarad capacitor in series with the original capacitor and repeats the experiment um, describe and how explain how this will affect the final voltage across the original capacitor and the time constant of the circuit so I'm going to switch right there the final voltage is going to be half I'm going to explain why soon voltage across the original um, capacitor so will be be 2.5 volts which is half of brackets half there's I'm going to put this sum of the voltages equals zero in a closed loop that's Kirchhoff's voltage law for you um, and both caps are identical both capacitors are identical there we go um, right and the reason for that is if you have any here we go you have any close like any closed loop you can this voltage here is equal to the voltage this uses plus the voltage that it uses. If we just completely ignore that, so this is pretend, or we just pretend this is um, another capacitor exactly the same as that, um, if this is 5 volts and these are two identical capacitors, whatever capacitance they have, irregardless, as long as they're identical, they're going to have, they're going to share the voltage. It's going to be half and half. Um, if you have three capacitors in there, well, okay, I don't know, if, if we have five in there, um, it'll split evenly between them because they're all going to be identical, so each capacitor will be 1 volt. So the sum of the voltages... Um, in this circuit will equal the sum of the voltages coming out. It works a bit differently for an well, inductor and DC is useless. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. But if this was AC, um, the principle still holds. The sum of the voltages um, should still equal the supply, but um, inductors work in the opposite direction to 180 degrees out of phase to the capacitors. It's a little bit different, but Kirchhoff loops laws still apply. Um, so yeah, right. Second part of the question: client time constant of the circuit. Um, so T is equal to RC, and new 
capacitance is equal to uh, brackets 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 bracket inverse um, just like that's in series isn't it yes in series so that's series yep that's done right um, which will be less will be less than previous than previous previously so since C decreases the new time constant tau will be less